me, Mr. Glenn. Not yet. Well, he's still a little out of condition. Yeah. How'd I do? Nine minutes, 40 seconds. Stay good for a dry run. <laughs> Next time, I'll do it nine minutes flat. Good. Speaking of dry runs... Ah, no booze, Frankie. Oh, come on, it's cold outside. Well, the deal's a deal. Not one drop till after the main event. Listen, I got thin blood. It's hereditary. My old man had blood so thin you could read through him. <laughs> yeah, went like clockwork, huh? Here, Gary, look, feel. Like a million dollars, Emil. Goes half that well in the real run. I think we got it made. Yeah, the real thing. How much longer we gotta wait? Gary? Give me some time. You think this is easy? It didn't bother you before. Who says it bothers me? It doesn't bother me a bit. Not a bit. Jane Crane, aren't you? Silly. I didn't expect you back until tomorrow. I left a day early. Those ales conventions are murder. And frankly, I was worried. Worried? About you. You've been spending too much time with that South American ambassador. Working nights and Saturday. That's almost over, thank heaven. He leaves tomorrow. Good. No more overtime. Not much more. The plates go out Friday, and that's that. Unless they have another dictator by that time. Friday. That ambassador, he insisted we use General Camillo's left side on the engravings. By Friday, we can have our one license side and blood is... test. License? Marriage license. No wedding's complete without one. Gary, don't joke about something like that. Who's joking? You mean it? I mean, really? Yeah, unless, um, unless you plan to work overtime. Oh, Gary! But, Gary, can we afford to get married? I mean, I mean, we'd have to have a place to live. I have a plan. Now, you tell me all you know about that South American shipment. I'll steal the plates. We'll print up our own money between General Camillo's left side, spend it all in the General's land. Of... You're a nut. A big, dumb, wonderful nut. How many years till Friday? Is that outside? It's parked right smack in front Yours, of the garage. Darling. I can't move one way or the other. I... Mine. Remember when I drove you to the train the other day? You saw it in the show window and admired it. So you it. bought it for me. Call it a welcome home present. You like it? Caroline, I've admired Windsor Castle for years, but I don't expect to come home and find it in my driveway. I've done the wrong thing again. Caroline. Oh, all right, Charles. Fill the car with ivy. We'll use it as a planter. Now, just a minute. Do you know what that car really is? It's an eight-cylinder, 300-horsepower bribe, complete with safety belts. Something to make your home and, and your wife a little more attractive to you. Now, look, Caroline, let's get this straightened out once and for all. I told you a hundred times, those trips were strictly business. Emil Gluick wants me to invest in a chain of art galleries, and we were just looking into some prospects. Three trips in two months. Darling, if you like Los Angeles that much, I'll... You'll what, buy it for me? With your kind indulgence, Mrs. Glennon, I'd like to earn the money myself. But it's foolish. Completely unnecessary. Not to me. Darling. When the handsome ski instructor marries the poor little rich girl, he shares her wealth and her love. Now, why not relax and enjoy it? Enjoy it? I'm trying to keep from being smothered by it. Well, my money exists, Mr. G, whether you like it or not. It's there. It's a part of me. I can't help it, Charles, any more than I can help loving you. Telephone, Mr. Glennon. 
Don't punish me for it, darling. Please. Mr. Glennon. All right, Mary. Who is it, Mary? Uh, Mr. Kemp. Gary Kemp. Business again? Uh, he's an art dealer. He's a friend of Emil's. Oh, can't you forget it this once, Charles? Please. All right, Gary, make it quick. The train leaves Friday, Mr. Glennon. The plates will be in the baggage car addressed to Senor Enrique Sanchez, S-A-N-C-H-E-Z. Who is Sanchez? Just the name. They're making the delivery look as inconspicuous as possible. They'll pick up the plates at the Los Angeles terminal, and their consul will take them to South America. Well, looks like you've been doing your homework. How's the train laid out? The same as the others. Diesel locomotive, baggage car, mail car, and then the passenger cars. We're in the first passenger car. Compartments... A, B, and C. The only thing between us and the baggage car is the mail car. Good. I'll get the word to the others. I'll see you on the train. Mr. Glenn, listen, I don't... We are leaving on Friday. Yeah! What's the matter with you? Nothing. You almost loused up the whole Magilla. That's all. Frankie, you, you, you were drinking <laughs> again? Ain't touched a drop since. Well, what is this? Self-discipline. Look at the ones on the bottom. I see the ones on the bottom, and they're full of whiskey. Can't get to them unless I knock over the pyramid, right? Well, as a semi-retired acrobat, I got the utmost respect for pyramids, right? <laughs> Frankie, you're a remarkable man. <laughs> uh-uh. This is my baby. These represent at least one hangover in almost every country in the world. See the glasses on the bottom? They're from South America. The scene of Frankie Shields' greatest triumphs. As an acrobat or as a drinker? <laughs> Both. <laughs> Soon you'll be able to start where you left off. Here, our reservations. I thought Gary was getting them. No, only to Los Angeles. These airplane tickets are from Los Angeles to South America. I wonder if they'll remember me. <laughs> You'll have a quarter of a million dollars to spend. They'll remember you like a brother. <laughs> I was Franklin the Fearless in those days. You know, they really dig a good high wire act down there. I once gave a command performance at the presidential palace. This time you'll be able to buy your own palace. <laughs> I might just at that. With a high wire spun of pure gold stretching across the grand ballroom. I'll decorate the place with your paintings, OK? Yeah, listen, Frankie, I was never too much with a brush. With etchings, maybe, or engravings, that's my speed. <laughs> etch me some etchings, I'll hang them on the wall. Yes. And come Friday, I'm going to etch us a million dollars. How do you like that? I like that. There's only one thing wrong, Emil. What do we do for an encore? <laughs> Frankie. Save that for an encore. Goodbye, darling. I'll wire you from L.A. I'll let you know when I'm coming home. Uh, compartments uh, A, B, and C. The porter just put your bags in. Oh, good. Thank you.
compartment B? Yes. Just put your bags in, sir. Uh, good. Uh, my friends and I are going to practice up for a bridge tournament, so we'd appreciate it if we weren't disturbed. Well, don't worry, sir. I know all about you bridge players. In fact, we had some with us about a month ago. They wouldn't put take cars down for a cup of coffee. <laughs> you don't have to bother making up the beds. We won't be getting much sleep. But would you mind unlocking the door between these two compartments? Thank you. I've already done it, sir. Oh, good, thanks. always like that in the circus, too. Always wound up before a performance. Come on in. Anyone you're in that compartment, Gary's in this one. Where is Gary? He'll be long. He better be. This is one show where understudies don't count. Hmm. Hi. Name's Cornwall. Railroad security. Remember me? Sure. You were on this run about a year ago. Working in a new case? No, not this time. First vacation in two years. Gonna grab me some of that California sunshine. Hey, mister, are you a real detective? No, uh, no, son. I'll pull on your head like a good little boy. You wanna watch that kid? He may be a midget. <laughs> Gently, Gary. The paper could scratch, the ink would run. Heaven forbid. Uh, silk, $35 a yard, but softer than human hair. General Camillo should be very proud to have his picture engraved on such paper. Oh, that should make beautiful money. Beautiful. <laughs> Gonna need a little help from us, Emil. Ah, uh, Gary, you better get set up in there. Uh. Operator, are you sure you're ringing the right number? Yes, ma'am, I am. Well, I can't understand... I've also had the line checked. All right. Thank you, operator.
All right, in exactly 11 minutes, we'll come to a good stretch of track. Not a sign of life. Every detail you've got memorized. Make this work, I'd memorize the entire telephone directory. Yeah, someday, Charlie, maybe I'll understand you. This crazy thing we're doing, I can understand it for me, or Frankie, or Gary. How else could we ever get our hands on so much money? But, but you, Charlie, you've got your millions. I didn't earn it, I married it. So you married it, why quibble? I mean, a beautiful woman like your wife. After all, it's no, no terrible hardship to love a girl like that. I'd like to love her, Emil. I'd like that very much. If it was me, I'd force myself. A man isn't qualified to love a woman unless he's an individual, not a toy, a lapdog. He's got to command her respect. And by planning this crime, this crazy thing we're doing, you'll command respect? Self-respect, Emil. How do I get that? Through success, right? Accomplishment, huh? Well, this is a kind of success. The only kind my wife can't buy for me. Here is our little mountain goat. Frankie, you all set? Kidding, I can almost set it to music. Out the window, up to the roof, over the mail car, over the baggage car, and down. Good. Give me a hand with this window. What do I get if I make it in less than nine minutes? No booze till everything's all over. You don't have anything stashed anywhere, do you? Listen, the guy'd have to be cold sober to do anything as nutty as this. A drunk would know better. Mr. Camp? Anybody home? Now, no, miss, it ain't my practice to go around unlocking doors for strangers. I told you I'm his fiance. Yes, ma'am, they all are. Please, I've been waiting and phoning and knocking on this door since 2 o'clock. We, we were going to be married today. Oh, well, I guess it won't do no harm to look around a little bit. Clothes are gone. We were going away for a week, on our honeymoon. Maybe he stopped off to see a friend. Oh, no, no, he would have called me. He'd never keep me waiting, not like this. Car trouble, maybe. Now, it ain't nice to think about, but accidents do happen. Operator. Operator. I want the police. <laughs> Temperature in ten minutes, Mr. Graham. Good. What's bothering you, Gary? Girl? It's gonna get pretty warm in here, Mr. Glennon. You better go. What are they paying you in that hotel in Miami? Fifty a week plus tips. Plus all the dates you could handle. Mm, that's right. Gary Kemp, smiling beach boy. Escort service at no extra charge. As I recall, you uh, picked up more girls and towels on that beach. That's why you hired me for the job, isn't it, Mr. Glennon? All right, I'm doing my job. I'm earning my share. Now, what else do you want from me? Your share comes to a quarter of a million dollars. You gonna give that up for her? All right. Don't get bugged by her. heading into a 10-mile curve so the engineer can't see in his rearview mirror. He wouldn't believe it if he did.
There's a handle inside that car. You just pull it in the tree. I don't know where you get your imagination from. Certainly not from me. is quite an imagination. Who was the man who caught the ball? The bridge player in there. They don't want to be disturbed. They're practicing for a big tournament. Uh -huh. Maybe we ought to check the baggage car. Because of that kid? Relax. Remember, you're on a vacation. <laughs> Good cop can never relax. Listen, nobody can get to the baggage car without going through the mail car. We've got two men on duty sorting the mail. Just the same. Won't hurt to look.
Patriots have been pushed around. They're bound to be shaken up. Vibrations and all. Come on, there's no one here. What do you expect to find anyway? My job, you don't take things for granted. Sixteen minutes. I thought you were dead. So did I. Oh, oh. What is it? I think it's busted. Want to laugh? Crate of booze fell on it. it. Wasn't even my brand. That thing looks terrible. We're gonna have to put something on it. How many hours before you have to bring the plates back? Sixteen. Do you think you can use your hand by then? Sixteen hours. I grow another one. I don't know, Miss Crane. He's only been gone a couple of hours. Three hours and a half. That doesn't exactly make him a missing person. He wouldn't just disappear. He would have called me or something. Don't you understand? We were going to be married today. How are you going on your honeymoon? By train? No, we were driving. Well, this is the envelope to a railroad ticket. He went on a trip last week, didn't he? Yes, a sales convention in Omaha, but he went by plane. Could we call this railroad? Hundreds of trains, thousands of reservations. I wouldn't even know where to start. Well, there must be somebody we could call. He, he must have left a note or a name or, or something. Miss Crane, I shouldn't even be here without a warrant. I could be held for illegal entry. But I called you. You don't live here. You're not even a relative. He wouldn't just leave me. I, I know he wouldn't. Look, that's a phone number. Maybe if you called that. I'm sorry, Miss Crane. This is not a case for the police. If he's still missing, say, tomorrow, you give us a call again. I got to lock up, miss. No, ma'am. I've told you before, this is the Glennon residence. I've got to find Gary Kemp. There's nobody here by that name. What name, Mary? One moment, ma'am. Ma'am, a woman? She's called three times asking for Gary Kemp. Mr. Glennon knows somebody by that name. I'll take it. Hello, this is Caroline Glennon. May I help you? Mrs. Glennon, I'm terribly sorry to bother you, but I'm trying to locate a Gary Kemp. Gary Kemp? He's an art dealer, isn't he? No. No, he sells ball bearings. He... Please, do you know where Gary is? I've got to find him. For heaven's sake, who is this? This is Jan Crane. I'm Gary's fiancé, and... and we were supposed to be married today, and... Well, Miss Crane, I believe my husband does know a Gary Camp, but he's an art dealer. He... Please, please, may I talk with your husband? I'm sorry Charles left for the coast today. Did he go by train? Yes, that's right. The, the Midwest and Pacific Railroad, is that the one? Yes, the Midwest and Pacific. Tell me something. How did you happen to call this number? <laughs> uh, they do good work at Transworld. General Camillo is almost handsome. He should be. <laughs> He's worth $100 American. Ah, the wages of sin. A year ago, this cutthroat general was an outlaw, a revolutionary. Now he runs the country, and his profile is legal tender. <laughs> Till the next cutthroat comes on the scene. Uh, how is Frankie's hand? It's terrible. He'll never get back to that baggage car. But what about the plates? I'll take them. 
Charlie, you can Come do Come on, let's go to work. It's up to 160 degrees. Anytime you're ready. I'm Jan Crane. Of course you are. Red eyes, runny nose and all. Now, first of all, I think you'll feel better without this. It's wilted. To Jan and Caroline, girl detectives. I, Gary Kemp, the art dealer, telephones Charles Glennon. Immediately thereafter, Charles announces another of his mysterious business trips. Item, Charles leaves on Friday. Item, Gary Kemp, the erstwhile ball bearing salesman, disappears on Friday. I don't think Gary's on that train. Really, I don't. Well, I know my husband's on that train. I drove him to the station. But Gary wouldn't do that to me. He loves me too much. Oh, I wish I could be that sure of my husband. I seem to know less about him every day. After two years of marriage? I try. Really, I do. All the love and luxury a man could want. The business trips become more and more frequent. And you don't know why? What can I do? Nag him with questions, read his mail, tap his phone? I'm almost afraid of what I might find. I don't think I could stand that. Not trusting my husband. Well, I'm not sure I can stand it either. Not anymore. All right, it's truth time. Caroline faces life. Care to join me? Well, I, I don't know. I mean, I... We'll grab a jet for Los Angeles tonight and be there to meet the train in the morning. Oh, no, I couldn't do that. You know something? You're as scared as I am. We're both afraid to face the truth. Mrs. Glennon, I just can't afford to go flying around the country. Well, I can for both of us. As a matter of fact, I may even own the airline. <coughs> These are ready. Uh, just one more batch. Then you can relax and take a nice warm bath. <sighs> oh, Charlie, Charlie. I'm getting too old to travel. I'm going to buy a villa in the south of France, near Picasso. He'll like my etchings. <laughs> I make good prints, you know. Even General Camellio would approve. <laughs> Charlie, these plates, 
You know, that isn't a ski slope out there. You could get killed. Money is worthless unless we get those plates back. I know, I know that, but why you? Because Frankie can't do it. You can't do it. All right, what about Gary? Not Gary. It's not important to Gary. It is important to me. Chicken down on you, Mr. Glennon. Now, the course you gave me, Frankie, I think I could do this walking on my hands. Fearless Charlie, huh? No. Wait a minute. Huh? You need it more than I do. Good, long, hard pull on that later, Frankie. Look, beautiful. Oh, I wish I could sign my work. <laughs> I mean the compartment. You hate to throw those heaters out, though. Heaters. Six years I spent designing that press, and now it's spread all over the Rocky Mountains piece by piece. I was drunk. I wish you were, too. Why don't you go back in there and sit down? I spend half my life getting shot out of cannons, skipping rope on a high wire, hanging by my teeth, walking on my fingernails, and for what? Nickels and dimes. You blame me for drinking myself out of the business? We're not blaming you, Frankie. Mr. Glennon comes along, picks me out of the gutter, drives me out, offers me a quarter of a million for one lousy trick. A quarter of a million. Look at me. Look at me. The one job that really counts. I gotta send in an understudy.
you're not. What's a big idea, kid? There's a man outside doing your trick. What trick? Climbing around outside the train. He used to be saying things, kid. He's gonna get killed unless we stop the now, train. Now, just a minute, just a minute now. What man, where? You better show me, kid. Well, come on. Look out, kid, you can get hurt. Ira, I've been through every car on this train looking for you. You know you're not supposed to be here. What about that? Just a branch of a tree hanging from the train, man. Your kid can sure dream up some whatness. Merciful heavens! Will you ever stop this foolishness? thing now is to make ourselves as inconspicuous as we possibly can. Los Angeles coming up, gentlemen. Anything I can do for you? No, thank you. We'll handle it. Yes. Excuse me, Gary. Take care of this for me, will you please? Wait Mr. a minute. We can carry that. Uh, that weighs a ton. Just take care of that for me, please. Yes, sir. You can claim this in front of the terminal. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. You betcha. Wait a minute. We just call attention to ourselves lugging that thing across the depot. We're too close to pay dirt to get careless now. What if you lose that claim check? Jan, honey, what are you doing here? I brought her here. Gary, this is Mrs. Glennon. Looking for Mr. Glennon. Well, as a matter of fact, he, uh, he was on the train. Gary, I have been worried sick. Will you please tell me what all this is about and tell me the truth? All right, the truth. I stood you up. You know why? Because I'm a floater, I'm a drifter. I collect girls like a beach boy collects bath towels. I don't believe that. Jan, I couldn't let you marry a guy like me. I'm a liar and uh, a lot worse. Gary, that isn't so. Isn't it? Ask Mr. Glennon. Ask I'd him. love to. Where is he? Right here, Caroline. Oh, darling. Oh, that was worth the trip. 
That was quite a trip. Gary and I stole a million dollars. Well, that's a relief. I thought you'd run off with another woman. Gary! It's true, Jan. A million dollars. I had to steal a million dollars to prove how much you're worth to me. Now, wait a minute. Where is all this money? It's in a suitcase. Right over there. Here, this isn't what I want. Jan! Now I've got twice as much as what I expected. You actually stole that money? You stole a million dollars? Me. My brains, my guts, my sweat. I planned it. I made the whole thing work. That's more than you and all your money could ever do for me. I understand. I'm sorry. Now, I think you do understand. Let's go home. Charlie, we have to talk to you. Here. For you and Frankie, from Gary and me. Happy South America. Thanks a lot. Here, you saw this. What are we going to do, Charlie? Cancel your reservations. That's him! That's the man who was climbing around outside the train! Oh, <laughs> Sonny, come here. Listen. Thank you.